And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildra, and with me, I have a newcomer here in the temple. The man, the mastermind behind the behind Thoughts of Light comics, and also, and the and the Risen Vision himself, creator of creator of um, Saint God's Warrior, which is going to be enter, which is going to be entering its third issue shortly. The one, the one and only Daniel Johnson. How you doing today, man? I'm doing great, man. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Thank, thank you for thank you for coming on. Um, Absolutely. I I was very, I was I was very te I was very tempted to make a to make a um saints jokes but um I'm not gonna, <laughs> I'm, not gonna I'm not gonna pick I'm not gonna pick on this I'm not gonna pick on the saints they're still in mourning over the loss of Breezes Christ. Oh man, that's that's, that's my team, man. You can't do it like that. <laughs> well, I, I'm in an awkward position because because I got you from New Orleans and I got and I got another person in the temple from Atlanta. Oh man. <laughs> I know how I know how these things I know how these things go. The only thing the only thing Saints fans and Falcons fans will agree on is that they don't like each other. X, you man, hey, man, you didn't you trying to set us up, man. <laughs> oh, I why do you why do you think why do you think I constantly get I constantly give my neighbors in in you know Wisconsin and Illinois all all the crap in the world. I already know. <laughs> And then you know I can't stand them other uh, Minnesota Vikings, but I ain't gonna give them no hate either. <laughs> being a Vikings, being a fan of sports in Minnesota is pain. I already know. <laughs> I understand. I, I was there live for that kick in '98. Oh wow! The one, mm -mm -mm. the one where the the one where the guy who up until that point had not missed a single field goal all year. Ends up missing the most important one. Yep, that's football. The sports gods giveth and they taketh away. Always. And there's no, and they, and if there is one thing they enjoy, it's suffering. <clears throat> well, um, hey man, look at it. You know, uh, from from Minnesota standpoint, y'all been beating our behind, man, the last few years. So y'all been giving us the, the give that keep on giving. Like I, I, I can't stand to talk for it, man. But y'all keep. Y'all always y'all for some reason y'all been out of kryptonite, man. You know, like I said, I hate to admit that, but I'm also a real Saints fan. You know, I'm, it, it's, it's painful to talk about, but it's true. Y'all had all over the last few years of playoffs, no, man. I'm, yeah. Um, fun funny story. One one of the um, one of one of the just one of the people that my that my that the company that that's my day job works with, um, is in New Orleans. And after mm -hmm. after the after those series after those series of chokes, including that incident, um, I was surprised when I came to the office and I found King I found King Cake for three days. Oh wow! <laughs> apparently, they, apparently they were sent they were sending they were sending the office King Cake. That's some good stuff, man. Which I'm, I'm not gonna come. Which hey, it's fr it's free it's free it's good stuff and it's free, so I'm not complaining. I just You're I just low. found it kind of, <laughs> found it kind of it was. It was probably it was probably already planned, but I just find the whole thing kind of funny. Right. <laughs> um, but, oh, but alas, I'm a I'm a monk, and the, and my and my and my personal vow was to is to tell the truth. So even if it's even if it's painful for you as as a Saints fan, I have to. <laughs> but I know. But I know. <laughs> but. With that, with that in mind, I'd like to go into the humble beginnings, in a sense. Um, Absolutely. How did you how did you first get into comics and word? And walk me through the moment when the writing bug hit you. Well, if I'll be honest with you, man, like I was into the comics growing up, but mostly like I was really into like the shows coming up, mm -hmm. and that's really where I got my inspiration from. I can say very at the early age of nine. Basically, man, you know, I grew up, you know, uh, you know, in you know, in church, you know, and in church, you know, there was some guys who was, you know, into art and drawing and everything. And that's kind of where, you know, the birth of Risen Vision really came from. It didn't start with this saint. I had other characters who I was, you know, starting to write with. And like I said, I was getting my ideas from characters. I'm really huge on like DC fans. So I grew up on a lot of shows like Batman versus Superman, Justice League, Teen Titans. Mm -hmm. You know, and of course you got Marvel, you got your Spider-Mans, your X-Men, like I said, you know, and, you know, like I said, if I'm being honest with you, you know, um, I've read a few comic books here and there, but like I said, my love really come from, 
you know, just the childhood, you know, of having all these cartoons. And you know, like I said, man, you know, my head just started, you know, like bursting out with ideas. You know, and like I said, that's really pretty much the humble beginnings. You know, for me, it was really like, you know, you know, you know, kind of, you know, kind of taking my own idea, you know, and, you know, kind of just like playing around with it. In the beginning, again, me kind of being in church, you know, that's something that I've always took serious, you know, in my, you know, my faith. You know what I'm saying? I have a strong faith, you know, in my Christian faith and everything. So, you know, I've always had this thing, you know, where I wanted to kind of, you know, mingle the two, you know, you know, a mix of, you know, like this, this character, you know, who's, you know, who's from God. You know who gets his power from God. You know and fights evil. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying. You know and like as I gotten older, of course, you know with age, you know you mature more in your stories or whatever. You know, uh, came this character, came the idea of Risen Vision. You know, like I say, basically the business in general represents, you know, kind of this, you know, kind of this inspiration, you know, of like, you know, basically giving God the glory. You know, because mm-hmm. of my faith, you know, that's what it represents. You know, and the first character Saint pretty much came to me at the age of 16. Originally, the character was going to be called Armor Bearer. You know, and, you know, basically just like, you know, uh, you know, basically like a, an, another meaning for a servant of God, mm-hmm. you know, but uh, that was pretty much taken. So I went with the simple the simple name of Saint. Mm-hmm. And again, the character is from New Orleans. I'm from New Orleans. And, you know, it really has nothing to do with the New Orleans Saints. <laughs> I know it's just ironic that the two mix like that. But, you know, it's just a character, you know, because, mm-hmm. you know, uh, again, in my faith, you know, my, you know, in our Christian faith, you know, um. You know, saint means servant of God. So I want to make a character, you know, who basically fights for God. He's a servant of God, you know, and, and like I say, you know, he gets his power from God. Um, I, That's why I, I could definitely tell you that's where I got it from. Like I say, you know, when I was younger, I had a lot of these characters, you know, and, you know, that I just kind of created from scratch, you know. And like I say, it was goofy ideas. You know, I was like nine. Hmm. So it was just like corny, goofy ideas, you know. But like I say, as I got older, I really put forth a character, you know, somebody who represents the arm of God. And like I say, by 16, I really started implementing this character, you know, and really giving him a, uh, an idea. So, mm-hmm. you know, a storyline. So, Would it be fair of me to say that um, you ended up creating characters first and then, and then built around and then built the, their world around them? Instead, instead of the other way around, since it's one of those chicken and egg situations that some people lean one way, some people lean the other. Right. Yeah, you can say that. Absolutely. Because like this, the idea I always kind of had in general, even like at the age of like 16, when I first found that originally the name of the business was going to be called Risen. So my idea was always building a universe again, just being a huge fan and diehard fan, like superhero movies. You got uh, you got Marvel you got DC, and like I say, you know, we in a stage now with superhero movies and everything. You know, we we in Avengers. You know, you know, like you know, like you know, we a couple phases up. You know, we going to multiverse and Marvel. You know, so like all these ideas is where I get my ideas from. You know, and for me, it's always been about building, you know, uh, this universe. Like I say, my saint is basically, you know, the Superman of my universe. You know, like I say, currently, you know, connecting the dots. Like, um, I won't give too much away about issue three, but I could just say at the end, you know, the the end of issue three, like in that last page, you know, when people do get to that last page, it's basically going to open the door for, you know, the universe created in my, you know, you know, you know, in my uh my universe of risen vision, you know, which is going to open the door for other heroes to come in. So, yeah, you can definitely say that. Like I say, I started with Saint, but like I said, the idea was always, you know, building a universe, you know, a, a team, you know, so. Yeah. And. I can de- I can definitely see that um, that whole in- that whole influence on on one's sleeve. Um, yeah. In in that regard, would you s- given would you say that um, that so- that the way you've set up Saint would fit in well would fit in naturally with the um, hero's journey? Yeah, I can um I can say that. Like I say, you know, um, because like issue one starts basically as origins you know so you know like i said basically that's basically what issue one is issue one mainly is focused on the origin the origin the journey of this character and like i say basically i did i got from Star from yeah about to say star wars basically i did i got from saint came from star wars really you know uh like i said for people who haven't purchased the book not to give too much away you know but issue one basically is the journey of a guy who was once anakin skywalker who turned to Darth vader and he came to luke skywalker that's mainly the idea i got for saint you know, uh, Star Wars, and then if you look at the character itself, he kind of got this idea. He would kind of be like the reverse of what Spawn was. You know, um, mm-hmm. you know the inspiration. You know, like I say, you know, you know, like Spawn. You know, he was, you know, um, you know, like he died, went to hell. You know, made a deal and everything. But with this character, you know, it's just a reverse. You know, you know, just like the holy part of it. You know, and like I said, I know Spawn got his holy part too. You know, but like I said, it's basically the two things I got my ideas from. So, 
you know, to answer your question about the journey part, absolutely. Issue one basically, you know, talks about his journey, you know, why he's going through what he's going through, and you know, and basically what caused him, you know, you know, you know, to become the same. Like I say, it's pretty self-explanatory. I kind of made it very simple, you know, that even a child can understand, you know, because I kind of want to get straight to the point. You know, so hopefully when you know when people purchase or you know, people reading the book, hopefully they can understand and see where I'm coming from. Miss you one. And it's fun it's interesting that you mentioned Spawn because when I when I was looking at the art, looking mm -hmm. at looking at some of the looking at some of the design at some of the designs and the like, um, there were two there were two images that kept that kept cropping up in my head. Um mm -hmm. one of them very much was um Spawn. <clears throat> and I'd and I'd say I'd say one I'd say one of the others, especially when it especially when it came to certain designs, um, was very very much in the um, in the in the um, transforming superhero um, sub subgenre that's that that ha that has its that has its roots in Japan. The to the um, tokusatsu um, approaches. Um, a few oh, yeah. examples of. Tokus of Tokusatsu would be Super Sentai, Power Rangers here in the States, um, yep. Kamen Rider, and Ultraman. Yep. Um, yep. And, and I can definitely say that. Um, actually, I forgot to mention that. <laughs> I was a huge fan. Like, Power Rangers probably was my favorite thing coming to watching. Mm -hmm. So, besides Spawn, you know, as you can see the design, the design wasn't even meant you know, to even be Power Rangers like design, but just by me being such a fan of it, it came out that way. And like I said, the character came out, look, you know, looking pretty dope. Mm -hmm. You know, so like I said, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm very pleased with, you know, you know, the, the way the character looks. You know, like I said, you could definitely say, you know, it is Power Ranger inspired, Power Rangers inspired. And then the character, you know, I wanted to kind of give it a different twist, even though he's a supernatural hero and he has these holy powers. You know, I in my stories, you know, I'm actually building him to be this highly trained martial artist. Mm -hmm. You know, because also growing up, you know, I've always been big on martial arts. Mm -hmm. You know, I was actually trained in martial arts. You know, my father, he's a, you know, an eight damn master. You know, so like I say, we grew up on martial arts growing up. You know, so I wanted to implement that in my books as well. You know, and pretty much through most of my books, it's going to be a lot of like martial arts, you know, and like, you know, just growing up on like, you know, like, you know, these martial arts movies and everything. I wanted to implement that in my books. So these characters not only bring, you know, like, Maybe the superpowers, you know, of characters like a Superman or like maybe a Goku, because these are evolving characters, mm. you know, but they can hold their own in a fight, you know, if it, if it has to come down to a fair fight, you know, skill wise. You know, it's so like I say, I'm, I, you know, when people read these books, they can definitely see or going to see down the line, you know, that these characters, you know, are definitely, you know, going to be, you know, uh, highly trained fighters, you know, on their way. Mm -hmm. Now. It's interesting that you meant that you mentioned um, draw, that you mentioned drawing influence from from both from both Marvel and DC because mm -hmm. um, when some when if you were to a, if you were to ask me the different the difference between the two there was there was one there was one line that a that a certain um, a certain writer had had said about both that I th that I think is fairly accurate Marvel creates characters DC creates icons and yeah. That's not that's not an issue of one of one of them being bigger being bigger than the other. But right. it's more an ish it's more a thing of of how of how how the two are generally written. Obviously there's gonna be exceptions on both sides of the fence. Right. But in the D C in the D C end of things, you have especially 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 with sometimes with um some of the with some of the cartoons and sometimes not. But you have this emphasis on mythology to put to, mm -hmm. to put it to put it in a certain way it wouldn't be a lot of a lot of the better stories for say superman wouldn't be too far removed from 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 say the, sto the from say the kind of legends in um in irish or Gre or greco-roman myth i can agree with that yeah um whereas um Marv, a lot of Marvel characters, you it's the appeal. The appeal is not, the appeal is not it, not them representing a certain ideal, but rather um, relating to their particular struggles. Because um, mm -hmm. you because you look at a, you look at a lot of them, and they and they are usually trying to make up for some for some grave mistake that they made in the past. In the case of say Doctor Strange, it was his unrestrained arrogance. In the case, exactly. In the case of <laughs> well, in the case of Spider-Man, it was the it was the fact that he le that he's partially responsible for his uncle's death. 
Um, mm-hmm. In the case in the case of in the case of Tony Stark, well, you well you have all the stuff that happened with him with with being effectively a war profiteer for ye- for years and exactly. his and his mm-hmm. issues with um with alcoholism because of well the whole demon in a bottle story that was done pretty well with Iron Man two um yep. which incidentally is one is one of my favorite Marvel movies um, oh yeah and. <clears throat> Um, even somebody like even somebody like Wolverine, in his case, just having to deal with um, outliving everybody because because of how old he is. Which, mm-hmm. depending on depending on who you ask, he was he was either born he was either born in colonial Canada, or he was born in ancient Egypt. Depends on who's writing. Mm-hmm. Um, the po- point is he's been, point is he's been around a while. Yep. Um. And the, but give, given that, um, where on that particular paradigm would you put Saint? Is he firmly in the middle, or is he, or does he lean more, want more for more towards one or the other? I would definitely put him like, because I like how you broke that down, and that's very true. I see that a lot with DC. DC characters are more on the godly side, mm-hmm. you know. So they characters is more like you know, oh yeah, you know, so powerful that they can't be stopped. You know, whereas I do love what Marvel, Marvel is more relatable, you know, with real life, mm-hmm. you know, you know, real life issues that we go through every day. And that's why I love so much about Spider-Man. You know, he has his life as this hero. And then, you know, he also has this life, you know, as, as you know, as this guy who's trying to go to school, who's trying to live his life, you know, trying to please this girl and everything else. Mm-hmm. And I can say the idea. <laughs> absolutely. I put it right in the middle. Like I would say this, if I can like base the two without you know, without being too familiar with originally DC or Marvel. Issue one kind of goes into the origins, which I would say issue one lean firmly towards maybe, you know, the beginning, which I, I say will lean more towards uh, DC, kind of showing his powers, mm-hmm. you know, but like I say, he struggles to get there, you know, because of a reason. I won't reveal a reason, you know, for the people who want to purchase the book down the line, but because of a reason, that's what causes him, you know, to become this character. And I feel like that part, you know, kind of comes back to Marvel because he does find a struggle. But issue two, Issue two definitely leans towards more of this character because in issue two, whereas issue one is just all right, this character is becoming this person, you know, who's, you know, you know, who's about to find, you know, who he is in life, you know, mm-hmm. you know, uh, you know, his calling, you know, he's supposed to be doing in life. His purpose is destiny. Issue two leans more towards, okay, I got this power, okay, but how can I balance that? You know, uh, I'm kind of intimidated with this power. That's one of the first things I put in issue two. Mm-hmm. You know, kind of being relatable. It's a, you know, this is a big responsibility. I'm intimidated with this power. I'm not used to having this. You know, like before this, I was just, you know, a regular human being. Mm-hmm. You know, this is a lot of pressure. So, absolutely, I'm happy you brought that fact up. Issue one talks about the DC, you know, uh, part of it where it's issue two. It relates more towards. You know, yeah, it's become more relatable. In issue two, I have him going to school. You know, he's meeting, you know, uh, you know, you know, maybe, you know, you know, a young lady, you know, and, you know, trying to balance the two. You know, you're seeing more of, you know, basically with issue two, long story short, you see more of the character's side outside of the suit, you know, and basically balancing the two out. You know, so like I say, if to answer your question, long story short, I would definitely put it right in between the middle. Cause that's really what I was aiming for. Again, taking inspiration from both DC and Marvel and being a slighter bigger fan of DC. Like I say, yeah, he has the powers of maybe characters of DC, but that's, of course, with evolving. He's just not powerful off the bat, you know. And like I say, issue two, you know, you know, going into, you know, the origin stage of, you know, like, you know, issue two, him being, re- you know, more relatable where people can, uh, okay, well, y'all can understand, you know, trying to balance our work and then trying to balance out not trying to be laid over here and then trying to balance out saving the world. You know, that's, you know, that's that's kind of the mingle and balance I wanted to put in there. So it's, I would definitely say it's right in between the two. Mm-hmm. Now, I want to make one minor um, clarification. Um, yeah. When I met, when I mentioned that, when I mentioned that whole that whole larger than life in Greek myth thing, um, mm-hmm. it wasn't necessarily on um, on the power on the power level in terms of how power someone how power, how strong a character's superpowers are, um, mm-hmm. but more but more on rep, but more on representing a um, ideal. Um, I'll use super, I'll use Superman mm-hmm. as an example. The ideal for the ideal in that case is hope. Um, yeah, which is which is why um, even even though the film is a mixed bag from a from a thematic perspective, I find a film like say Superman Returns interesting because I feel like what it was trying to do is is have um, Superman as the as a um, post religious Christ figure. Mm-hmm. 
it didn't it didn't succeed because 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 Brian Singer is the master of mediocrity. But right, <laughs> I agree with that. Um, I agree with that. Because <laughs> with um with some with a character like a character like Batman, that ideal is um justice. Um, right. Is which is which was especially apparent with um with the Nightfall story arc that gave that gave um that gave the sto- that gave the uh, comic um Azrael. Where the, where they mm. were basically asking, is Batman too tame for the nineties? Mm. Um, and o- Osrael was meant to be the was meant to be the response, um, but t- but taken to taken to a certain extreme, obviously. Um, mm-hmm. <clears throat> but that but that's that's the key that's the key thing is is that is that theme of of um hope. Or hope, okay. justice, um, truth in the case of Wonder Woman, but some kind of ideal that in a lot of their stories is strived for. Um, when it comes to I Superman, I'd, I'd say the best example of that was um, mm-hmm. All Star Superman. Yeah, yeah, good example. Which is ki- is kind of is kind of set up like it, like Superman doing the twelve labors of Hercules. Mm-hmm. Uh. I just I just wanted to make I just wanted to make that clarification that it's not a it's the it's not ex, it's not exactly about um power level in that in that instance. Um now one th- one thing that one thing that I have that I have to ask just from an outside perspective especially since especially since we especially since we brought up Power Rangers earlier is yeah some he- some heroes they have to literally suit up. Some people mm-hmm. some people they can just tri- they can just some people they can just transform. They can just trans. They can just transform into into that gar- into that garb, at a thought. Um, mm-hmm. Where is where is Saint in that partic- in that particular um, scale? Yeah, I'm happy you asked that. <laughs> Basically, Saint is one of those characters that you know it wasn't like okay, you know he found this power or he was mistakenly you know uh you know mistakenly ran into the power. Because he was chosen, he was actually born from, you know, from his birth, he was meant to become this character, you know, or this hero, you know. So basically the power of being in him all alone, you know, was just at a certain uh, point in time for him to find it. <clears throat> you know, like I say, basically in issue one, you know, like there's a scene, you know, the first thing you see, you know, is basically, you know, him trying to, you know, find his power because, you know, he has a mentor, in a, you know, in the story and the mentor is telling him, you know, to basically you know, uh, you know, focus from within. He's he basically he has to like focus like his inner, basically his inner chi, his inner man, his spirit man. You know, and like I say, if he can, if he can focus his spin his spirit man to take over his body, that's how the suit forms. So look at it more on the form of like, you know, more like a Green Lantern. Mm-hmm. You know, but like I said, without the ring, or that's kind of how the suit will form over his body, like the movie, or more like, or you know, like Justice League, like in the cartoon, or more like Venom. You know how the suit kind of forms over the body, yeah. or heck, like Spawn. Like Spawn, like, you know, it, it, but it comes from his inner man. It's basically the stronger version of him, you know, his spirit man, his inner being, you know, his inner chi, you know, so that's basically the idea I took with it. It's not a suit. It's kind of it's kind of him. It's him in a way, you know, and like I say, basically, he has stronger forms of that. You know, it's basically like, you know, you know, it's basically like, you know, the stronger his fate, the stronger he becomes, which is going to take years how I'm going to have it based in the books, you know, yeah. like I say he's not just strong off, you know, off the bat, you know, like I say, but. You know, like that's basically you know the form of you know him transforming. So, yeah, and with the, with that in with that in with that in mind, um, obviously, obviously, when it comes to when it comes to something like a hero's journey, the other mm-hmm. end of the um one of the import one of the important phases of that is the is the well the well one of the first important phases is the call to adventure the the fact that something ha- that um something happens to sh- to shake them out of out of the out of their particular comfort zone and put them on the path right um now i'm get i'm guessing that's something that is that does happen in issue 1 but the but yeah. some but the other aspect of it and the reason why i bring up the call to adventure specifically is that it's usually someone who put who is putting them on that path in in some form of a mentor role in um in the case of Star Wars, mm. that was well Obi Wan. Obi Wan, right? <clears throat> um, is there is there an equiv is there an equivalent to that in Saint? Yes, there is. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, a mentor, basically a guy, 
Mentor is basically a guy, like I say, uh, I'm currently working on his origins. So down the line, he's going to have his stories basically on you know, him. And that basically kind of explains that in the beginning. Him and his brother was, you know, two of the people that gave this this powerful weapon, you know, to, you know, um, the main villain. Mm-hmm. You know, and basically, you know, this villain did something traumatic. And now, you know, he's living with the thought of it for years and centuries, you know. And, you know, he kind of promised himself, you know, that he would never... You know, go out and you know, you know, make this mistake again. I won't reveal it because you know I have it in the book. But basically, you know, uh, you know, when he does run to, you know, you know, run into this character, Derek, you know, he's kind of having his fault, you know. But at the same time, you know, you know, him kind of being mature above his years, you know, you know, it's going to come along, you know, come around and helping Derek, you know, and basically let him know. By the way, Derek is Saint. That's his uh, his uh, secret identity name. But basically, letting Saint know, Derek. You know that look. Um, you know, basically, you know, you're called. You know, he gonna be like, I've been new this, you know, but you're called. You know, to protect this city. You know, that's that's your calling. You know, this is, you know, you know, you know, you basically called to protect the city. It's your destiny. It's your purpose. You know, and that's basically going to lead him. You know, into the reason why. Now, you know, he's basically going to kind of lead him into the basis of you know, um, you know, you know, finding his power. You know, and finding that purpose. You know, and who he's supposed to be. Yeah, it gets deeper into that. You know, like I say. Something in you know you know something in the book really triggers the saint you know which causes him to you know first summon a suit you know and you know like I say basically you know, go you know, go out to protect you know and fight against this evil you know that's threatening him at the time mm-hmm. so and would it be would it be accurate of, of me to say that the um that the t- that the title of saint is is has something of a legacy to it that there have been there have been previous there have been previous holders of the armor over over the years. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, um, not particularly over the armor, but there's like I said, there's a particular weapon in the book. You know that uh something happened centuries ago. You know, like I said, that basically ties into that, and you know, going to find out down the line, it basically ties deep into Saint. You know, uh, being this character of like really many generations, like Derek was actually a character of many generations, kind of like a bloodline in his family way back in like ancient times. Mm-hmm. So yeah, absolutely. It, de- it definitely connects down the line. You know, like I say, basically, you know, uh, basically it's almost like one of those, it's a simple origin story. Kind of like I said, I want to get straight to the point, but you know, it's kind of like, okay, you know, this is your calling. This is your destiny. You was born for this. You know, this is what, you know, you was called to do, you know, embrace your calling, find your destiny, find your purpose, you know, and embrace it to the fullest, you know, and if you do that, you know, you will become, you know, ultimately, you know, a hope to this city, you know, uh, you know, basically, you know, because like, basically in the storyline, the city is has prayed for somebody to come, you know, uh, stop the evil that is in that city. The story is based in New Orleans. I haven't touched too much on voodoo yet, but, you know, uh, I'm going to be touching on that down the line. So, you know, um, that's kind of one of the things I added. I kind of throw a little bit of that, you know, there's a lot of evil going on, a lot of you know, chaos and everything in the city has prayed for a savior. So that's basically what he's called to do. Kind of, you know, you know, God has basically called him, you know, to come save this city, you know, and, you know, uh, get it out of this evil, you know, this hell that's going on in the world. Mm-hmm. So. Now, with, now with that, obviously because of, because of the, the um, martial arts leaning that you've, that you've mentioned, mm-hmm. um, one thing, one thing I'm curious about is how you is how you structure um, fight scenes. Um, what goes mm-hmm. what goes through your head when trying to structure how how it's going to look like? That's interesting. I would definitely say, um, me being a big fan of martial arts uh, movies, you know, and just like you know, like I say, you know, the way I've grown up in it, you know, uh, basically, you know, just like in my head, it's like pretty much just choreography, like you kind of watch in the movie. I know you can't put that on pages, and that's kind of tough, you know, but, you know, basically, like I say, like, if I give you a perfect example, the mentor of um of Saint, basically, I kind of based him a little bit behind Yip Man. His style would be more Wing Chun. He's really good with his hands. He was a little bit of his feet, you know, whereas Saint, I'm a huge fan of Bruce Lee, you know, so, you know, um, you know, kind of being a mixed martial artist. I don't know if you're too familiar with Bruce Lee, but he was kind of father oh, mixed martial artist. Yeah, I, like you know. Huh? <laughs> I am. Um, I'd say, I'd say the two the I'd say two people who who were instru- who were instrumental in the development of mixed martial arts were him and um, Judo Joe. Yep, absolutely. Yep. Mm-hmm. So that's basically why I took my ideas from. Um, you know, like I say, basically going through the picture and, and the scenes of it, like. Mm-hmm. 
You know, like I have one of like the classic like high kicks, just a classic high martial arts kick in the book, you know, just to show, you know, why I'm implementing into, you know, uh, that also. Also, I have a lot of weaponry going on. You see more weaponry in issue two. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, it's a lot of sword fighting. So with the sword fighting, again, it's kind of going more of like your classic martial arts movies, you know, like Once Upon a Time in China, I think with uh, Jet Li, um, you know, uh, you know, a, a little bit of crouching tiger, hit and drag, you know, without too much of the flying, you know, but like I say, you know, more, more, more of the beautiful swords fight and even a little bit of blade, you know, when blade fall frost at the end, you know, kind of that beautiful, uh, you know, that beautiful hand fight. These yeah. are the thoughts that go in my head and kind of how I kind of want to implement it on, you know, uh, paper, you know, the best way possible. Like I said, it's kind of hard when it's not in motion, but, you know, trying to make it, you know, uh, at least try to be into motion, you know, mm -hmm. so. Yeah. The, the interesting thing with your, with your background is you is you mentioned you mentioned a fair amount of well hand to hand and um gra and grappling um mm -hmm. when it came, um how how do you have do you have a, do you have a similar background when it comes to when it comes when it comes to we when it comes to weapon use like say he like say hema or Ken or kendo or something similar well i'm i'm pretty familiar with it like growing up, we didn't study too much. We we studied on it, but we didn't study too much heavily on it. You know, we used a little bit of stick training here and there, you know, but you know, it was really a lot of hand to hand combat, which we trained in, you know, growing up and everything. So I say that's that's basically where my most of my experience, yeah. you know, came from. Mm -hmm. Like I say, you know, kind of being a little bit familiar with weaponry, not too familiar, but you know, being a little bit familiar, you know, and understanding, you know, choreography and how it plays out in movies. You know, like I say, you know, um, able to implement a little bit of what I know into the books, you know. But like I say, yeah, when you see more, it's more hand-to-hand -hand combat. Like I say, that's pretty much, you know, what I'm very familiar with. Like I say, you know, looking at movies and kind of, you know, training in it too. So, more of an inspiration from that. And for and just just for the purpose of clarification, HEMA is an mm -hmm. acronym that stands for Historical European Martial Arts. Okay. Um, so, um, long so um long swords um hal halberds um the ki the kind of the kind of thing that you the kind of thing that you might see a mini a a mini a medieval knight or a la or a lance necked or or something similar to that utilize oh okay i look into that okay um and and um that and that also applies to um fencing is also is also put into that category as well it's just diff it's just different eras um, okay. Interesting. Now, <clears throat> I'd say I'd I'd say give, given the given the kind of things that you've that you watched as as reference, would it be fair of me to say that one of the things that that was that was definitely key for you when when put when choreographing fight scenes is um is not is is keep is keeping the camera steady. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> now, I only bring that up for a couple reasons. One, um, sometimes with some bad action movies, I have what I have what I call the camera cut drinking game. It's uh, mm -hmm. much like the Stephen King drinking game. I do not advise any anyone of lesser constitution to do this. I can I can <laughs> do this because well, you you've seen me. I'm not I'm not exactly a short man. Right. <laughs> um, but when it comes to fight scenes, take a shot every time there, every time there's a camera cut. Oh man, <laughs> I do not recommend you do this. You will probably end up being heavily inebriated before before the min before the first minute. Um, man, well, man. And one of the things that um one oh, go ahead. Um, not too long ago, I I happened to see a um a bit of a mini doc that Jackie Chan did when it came to how to do action comedy. And mm -hmm. he ended up railing for about for about a minute about how much he how much he couldn't stand um, excessive camera cuts. He br he brought it up of do of um, camera of showing the cam the of the camera showing the punch and then cutting to a different angle right when the punch hits. And he said, "You, the problem with doing that is your eyes your eyes end up re end up resetting and it ta and it takes you out of it." Wow, <laughs> oh. I can agree with that. To make your eyes hurt. Um, yeah, it's. I'd say I'd I'd liken it to one of to one of the other to a to one of the other pet peeves I have when it came to old comics, um, mm -hmm. of that of that of have that of spreads that have you turn the thing ninety degrees, which was a which was a bet which was a bad habit all the way up through the nineties. Uh, 
Yeah. Because you're because you're t- you're breaking immersion because you have to physically turn the thing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, but would would it be fair of me to say that w- that keeping that keeping that preamble in mind, um, one of one of the key, one of the key things for you is 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 to make is to give even more consistency than usual when it comes to the sequence of well sequential art. Absolutely. Absolutely, I could agree with that. One, one, one of the recent movies I watched, man, that kind of had those close fight scenes and the cuts that kind of really kind of ticked me off was Mortal Kombat. The new one that came out, like I thought uh, the fight scenes was good, but you could tell they cut out a lot of that. That's kind of agitating. I feel like they cut out, you know, the flow of the like the fight between uh Scorpion and Sub Zero in the beginning. I don't know if you've seen the yeah, newer seen, one, but that's kind of agitating me, man. Um, <laughs> when it comes to that new one, I've I had some. There were some people in the temple who defended it. My attitude was. Is it as bad as Annihilation? Oh no! no. Oh no! 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 <laughs> is, it as go- is it as good as the? Is it as good as the original? No. Also no. And no. <laughs> um, I will admit that there there was there that um there was one moment that um I'm I'm surprised I didn't get thrown out of the theater for do- for doing this because I, because I basically <laughs> went oh f you movie um because. It seemed it seemed that they had finally settled on some on some kind of arc and go and going some with some follow through when it came to when it, when it came to their uh, their totally original character. Mm-hmm. Um, eh, as far as far as get as far as getting as far as um being able to being able to win a fight against against his ancestral foe Sub Zero, mm-hmm. and then just at the climax of it, when you when you think when you think okay finally he's gonna get the big win. He gets friggin' kill steal because Scorpion comes back from hell. Yep. All because they <laughs> needed to have that. All because they needed to have that moment. I'm like, I, I, I didn't like the way they had that set up. Like, like if that. you if you really need to do the Scorpion and Sub Zero thing, just have him take up the mantle. Exactly. He's already his ancestor, so what the hell? Right. Right. But like I said, you know, all together, just leave the guy out and just let Scorpion and Sub Zero follow the. The the you know the original story and I wish I know movies never do. It's like you were just like Resident Evil, you know, like you always have to add an extra character in. You know, I, I, I you know that that kind of it's funny irrit- you mentioned him. It's funny you mentioned Resident Evil because there what there what um the one that we got wasn't the mm-hmm. one that was going to happen originally. Oh, the ori- mm-hmm. there what there um the late Romero did a did a script for for res for his vision of a resident evil oh um, and um, what's int- what's interesting about it is obviously he obviously he's not much of a gamer even back then so mm. what he did so we what he did instead was he had he had a bunch of his interns play through the original resident evil um mm-hmm. cuz at the, at the time at the time his main connection was doing a bu- was doing those um, live action ads for the first game. That's all. That's all that anyone had to work with at the time. I think it was just one and two. Um, mm-hmm. And he had he had them tape it and send him the tapes. So he effectively invented let's playing. <laughs> wow. Um, <laughs> and I have I have I... seen snippets of what of of what he of what he had planned because because somebody um somebody put the thing out, somebody put the thing out over over the net years ago. Um, I can definitely, I can't say it would have been worse, but, um, I can def, but there definitely wasn't, wasn't, um, let's introduce, let's introduce this new, let's introduce this new Alice character who's, who, um, who's totally, who's totally not Mary suing it up because it, because it's totally not my wife. (laughs) There's nobody to ask for. (laughs) Yeah. Um. look, I I like, I like Jojovich as much as, as much as anybody else, but, um, it's 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 the it's the case of you can't I can't un I can't unsee the whole husband and wife part of the whole thing. Exactly. Um. But give but um given the, given given that given the given all the um all the moving all the moving parts that you that mm-hmm. you have with, that you have with um Saint. Mm-hmm. Um, it's always a delicate balance when you're introducing a universe to make sure that you don't overwhelm readers. 
So exactly. Have, have there been instances where the, where there was some story element that you want that you wanted to add, but you decided to cut, you decided to you decided to shelve it for the time being because it would have had people getting lost in the weeds. Absolutely, yeah. Um, and you know, I can definitely say as a writer, there's always um, you know, you know, there's always room for um improvement. I feel like Dave and I with issue one, I feel like you know, there's a few things you know that could be worked on, you know, better, which I wish I did. You know, but I could definitely say uh, in the beginning, one of my original stories, you know, um, you know, like you bought a Resident Evil original script. One of my original stories was saying, well, I was actually going to have him, you know, more from a different planet, you know, that the character himself. You know, and basically, you know, he, you know, you know, he was kind of, uh, you know, enchanted with these powers, you know, kind of already, you know, and I, and I said I had this special name for it and everything, you know, I, I forgot what, uh, what, because uh, I, I remember writing an original script for him, I forgot what I called him. I think I knew it started with a G. I think it was gonna call him like the, uh, the Gildians or something like that. But, you know, I felt like at the time it would be too much. I was kind of trying to go more in like a, you know, more like a thermoscara type, you know, um, weight. You know, more of a thermoscara type scene, you know, okay, well, maybe there's, what if there's these mini saints at a time, you know, but at the same time, I wanted to kind of keep it simple, you know, simple, you know, where it wasn't like, okay, well, I kind of got too much going on right now. You know, like I said, that's kind of why, well, for issue one, by being my first book, and like I said, I just kind of want to keep it simple, you know, and understood, you know, like I said, where even a kid can understand it. And like I said, by being just an origin, I didn't want to put too much into it, so you know, uh, my game plan down the line is like I said, I'm working on current origins, which is going to deeply tell a story. Like I said, my focus for issue one is just okay. Let's get this character out. This character is called a son. You know, how did he become that character? You know, you know, what is he struggling? You know, why did he become that character? You know, and what caused him? You know, like what made him become that character? That was basically my focus with issue one. You know, like I said, yeah, I did have some different ideas, but I felt like this was the best idea to go with. You know, you know, I feel like the readers would just go, okay, well, I understood the story. You know, like I said, I liked it. You know, it was kind of simple and to the point. So. Yeah. Um, now, with with the, with that kind of thing in with that kind of thing in mind, since you mentioned looking back at the at issues one at issues one and two in hindsight, um, what mm -hmm. would you say were some were some of the big some of the big learning experiences you had? Um, putting together the, putting together those issues that you hope to apply to future projects. I would definitely say, uh, you know, just like you know, when you come to like even with, with comic books, I know that's like this thing is like as being a writer, just stuff that's always going to irk you. And I know personally, it irks me, you know, like just like simple things that maybe like okay, well, I felt like this could have been told better, you know, um, you know, this this could have been edited better. Mm -hmm. You know, well, like I say I felt like well, I can complete it. With issue three, my main focus right now, like I say, is currently being developed. Uh, issue three, I want to be able to tell all those plot holes that may be missing out of issue one and issue two. Like I say, issue one is basically focused on the origin story. And like I say, a lot of people understand issue one. I've got a lot of great reviews for issue one. A lot of people understand issue two. You know, because like I say, it basically tells the focus, you know, of this character, his life outside of, you know, this hero and the struggle. Whereas issue three, issue three is the last version of the subtitles for it's called All Out War. Issue one was the origin. Issue two is, okay, who's this character? Issue three focuses more on, okay, this is the war. This is what happens. And also, it focuses a little bit more on the villain, too, in the beginning, you know. So, you know, because it kind of shows, okay, you know, you know, what is the motivation behind this villain? You know, like, why is he doing what he's doing? So by the time you finish issue three. I feel like, you know, that everything is going to kind of come together. And I feel like I did my best with that. But like like I was telling you just a few minutes ago, you know, um, as a writer, there's always that pressure, you know, you kind of beating yourself up, you know, like, Dan, I wish I could have, you know, perfected this better or perfected that better. You know, like I said, the beautiful thing about me creating a universe, I can always come back around, you know, and balance some things out, you know, you know, that coincides with issue one and issue two, which I love to do because, again, it's my passion, you know, so it's always fun for me to brainstorm and come up with different ideas you know, to connect the dots correctly, you know, where the readers want to be like, all right, this was, I understand this, but this was a little confusing, you know, so. Yeah. And with the, now with that in mind, you, you're, you are at this time gearing up for the release of issue three, which I, which I believe would be, would be your um, culmination of every, of everything that's been, that's been built up. You're it's, you're certainly giving off that, imp that impression. Um, exactly. Now, give now um with that with that particular issue, are your are your plans to essentially wrap up what you've built up while le while leaving seeds for th for um things to come? Yeah, absolutely. Like I said, I would definitely say with issue three. Like I say issue three basically. I could tell you if I could say it in the simplest form. Issue three basically, 
I say kind of tell the plot holes for issue one and issue two. You know, and like I said, I feel like it completes that story completely. It doesn't kind of, you know, you know, it doesn't, you know, it, it doesn't lean off this way like in the middle of the book. Uh, it completes the storyline completely. You know, you kind of get what's going on. You kind of get, you know, why this character is guilty. Maybe why this character is pissed off. You know, and like I say, by the end, you know, it kind of builds into okay. You know, um, you know, you know what's, you know, what's to come in the future. I can go already. Go ahead and tell you, I already have Saint Chapter Two. Cause this is chapter one right here. I have three issues set for chapter one. I already have Saint Chapter Two set up, and by the end of chapter, by the end of issue three, you know, readers gonna be able to see. Okay, all right. So, all right, there's this. You know, you know. All right, all right. Here, here's the new setup for the next chapter. I already have that setup. Oh wow! Also, at the end, you get just a little snippet of okay. There's possibly being, you know, like for readers, you know, that's kind of curious. It's gonna be like, okay, well, there's possibly being a universe built. You know, so like I say, issue three tells it completes that story of issue one and issue two. But like I say, it also shows, you know, there's way more to come. You know, there's there's this larger universe. And like I say, you know, this this character storyline is just beginning. Same character storyline is just beginning. You know, like I say, for right now, you know, I I currently have eight chapters uh, set for Saint. Like I say, his character is just beginning. And like I told you, he's more of an evolving character. Also, if I could take a little inspiration from Goku, you know, kind of being that character, you know, where he's only going to get stronger with time. Like I say, and that's going to take years. You know what I'm saying? So like, you know, you know, maybe he's a skill, you know, you know, maybe he's a, a beginner and a skill fighter now. And like I say, you know, a little bit of that, you know, become, you know, you know, has to do, you know, because, you know, uh, you know, him, you know, him being his character, you know, this garlic character, you know, so, you know, him having, you know, just the little skills he have him, you know, kind of having these garlic characters kind of enhanced his, his fighting ability just a little bit more, you know, but like I say, down the line is only going to, you know, uh, you know, succeed him into this mastery level of both, not just skill and fighting, but skill and like powers as well. Mm. And like I say, yeah, to, like I say, like I was telling you earlier to make a long story short, it's basically going to build this entire universe. That's basically what it's setting up. By the end of issue three, people are going to be able to tell, like, okay, this is the entire universe. And also they're going to be able to tell, okay, this is also leading into, okay, this man, you know, has a, a second chapter coming out, you know, and he's working, you know, uh, to fight against these other villains. You know, so Saint is definitely being set up as the main, you know, you know, the main savior here. There's so many words. Yeah. Now, there's there's a bit of a there's a bit of a saying that a lot that a lot of people a lot of people build to the tr to the trades um, for mm -hmm. the last few years, which it isn't it, it the effect of trade paradox isn't is a mix, is a mixed blessing when it comes to comic books, but that's the um, that's the historian in me talking. Um, mm -hmm. <laughs> But what I what I'm curious about is down the road, do you have do you have any plans to collect um, issues one through three in a in a um, in an equivalent of a trade paperback or a prestige book? Yeah, um, you mean like like combining the three maybe possibly? Yeah, com yeah, combining them into a full into a full on volume. Absolutely, no question. That's that's actually one of my uh that's that's actually one of my long term goals. Uh, I definitely want to put all three books because. I'm going to tell you my idea. That's definitely one of my game plans. I want to put all three books in and at the end, you know, kind of give you, you know, uh, you know, you know, even a deeper storytelling. Like I was telling you, you know, like, you know, you know, basically, you know, like even with, you know, like let's say, let's say you have somebody who purchased all three books, mm -hmm. issue one, issue two, and issue three. Then they come back, you know, and they see this new book, you know, which is the same book as all three issues in one. You know, but I kind of want to make like, you know, at the end, you know, you have each character, you have who it was, mm -hmm. you know, a little bit of cyclopedia. I want to add a little bit of, you know, stuff into it, you know, like some puzzles, you know, kind of, you know, kind of solve some mystery stuff into that. You know, like I say, basically, you know, like, you know, just basically add little, you know, pieces here and there, you know, to kind of, you know, complete that puzzle, you know, based like a whole origin. You know, like I say, definitely, like I say, by you saying that, that was already originally in my plans. That'd be like the complete edition, you know, of chapter one. So that's absolutely in my plans, no question. Mm -hmm. And I'll cer I'll certainly be I'll certainly be keeping an, keeping an eye out for, keeping an eye out for that, especially since looking at looking at your um, site, it looks like there's a few there's a few other um, a few other projects that you have that you have coming that you have coming down the line. Um, yeah. Now, of of the of the three other projects that you have listed as coming soon, I'd like I'd like you to tell me what you could about the the one of the three that that actually has some semblance of um of cover or or um character art and that that being um Mirak. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Me actually, Mirak is my next character. Um, after Saint uh, Mirak, basically, it's more on like I told you, I'm pretty much very inspired by 
lot of cartoons, you know, a lot of things. Well, Mirac is kind of inspired more in the real realm. You know, uh, he's more on he's more human side. Like his character is based strictly loosely Punisher, kind of Batman, kind of character, Avengers and Justice. You know, and like I said, I kind of want to take, you know, more into, you know, a relatable stage, you know, where this guy, he kind of grew up in a poor environment. You know, he grew up in a project, you know, you know, basically he lost his uncle. You know, his uncle raised him in this environment, you know, how to, you know, how to, you know, basically how to survive, you know, in the hood, basically in the struggle, you know. And you know, basically, you know, there's, there's something going on way deeper than what people see, basically, in the storyline you're going to see down the line. It's not just, okay. You know, it's not just okay. This is a corrupt city because there's violence going on, it's drugs. You know, you know which we see in everyday life. But adding a comic book element into it, you know, you're gonna find out there's there's a dark magic going on. You know, like I said, you know, this guy's training is basically going to build into that. You know, that's basically me racking a nutshell. And basically, his uncle training him. His uncle has a secret. You know, um, you know, to basically the world that you know that he knows about. You know, personally, you know, but basically, you know that, you know, his uncle didn't really tell a lot of other people. Like I said, it's not really a bad secret, you know, but it's basically going to prepare Mirak, you know, for what's to come, you know. So, like I say, Mirak kind of with, with Mirak, it's it's also an origin story. Me, I feel like Mirak is more of an origin story than what Saini is because with Mirak, I kind of have him starting from a very young age and literally building into this character that we're going to see. With Mirak, I wanted to make it as so, you know, where you see him actually going through the struggle at the age of six, age of twelve, and again growing up, you know, in his heavy loose environment, the projects, you know, like. You know that community you know like you know you're going to see that struggle you know and you're going to see you know you know you know what brought him to this point and like i said you know it's like i said it's more of a vengeance story again kind of take inspiration from batman you know and this is what basically caused him to become this character you know but like i say not exactly from batman because he's going to find out down the line you know that you know it's just not about vengeance you know so like I say, that's uh, like I say, me rag. If you, like I say, if you look at the art, I know you say you looked at it. If you look at the art of me rag, if you can kind of tell in the background, it kind of has more of a dark, a darker sequence. I don't know if you can realize that. Like I say, he's kind of more in a, you know, kind of more of you know, kind, kind of poverty stricken place. But like I say, people's going to come to respect him. Basically, like he's going to become like, let's say, y'all, uh, you know, basically like, basically like your hood hunter in so many words. You know, you, mm -hmm. you know, kind of character. You know, you know, who, you know, who stops violence, who stops corruption. You know, like people's going to respect him. You know, but he's going to have to earn his name. Once people respect him, it's going to be like, you know, how they say, oh, it's the bat. Oh, it's Mirak, man, get out of here. You know, like, you know, Mirak doesn't like to see violence and he's going to get tired of that. And now, you know, after seeing his uncle die, it's going to be like, all right, I got to put it into this. You know, so like I say, definitely taking inspiration from Batman, you know, with that, you know, but like I say, um, being original in a way, not being exactly like Batman, you know, like I say, being original in a way, you know, like I said, I definitely want to be relatable in that aspect. You know, like I say, adding the aspect of, you know, we do see in real life, you know, there's an urban community in this in this comic book. You know, like I say, in that urban community, is more realistic as with his character. He's human. He doesn't have superpowers, but he's very knowledgeable. He's very smart. You know, he has more like gadgets, knives, quick weapons. And like I say, he's more of a punisher. He's more of a darker character. You know, like he doesn't hold back. You know, like here, you know, he'll have to do what he has to do, you know, for you, you know, to understand, you know, that he's not playing games, you know, that you're going to, you know, you, you're going to respect him, you know. So, like I said, I'm very excited to get to him. But like I said, he's telling a whole different story. He's not in Day versus Saint. <laughs> so. And I will, I will admit, I will admit that, um, that, that brings up, an, that brings up an interesting concept with that, with that line between, between, ju between justice and, um, and vengeance mm -hmm. um and i'll and i'll certainly be i'll certainly be keep be keeping it be keeping an eye out um for for the, for that particular um development um mm -hmm. now when it when it comes to when it comes to some of the when it comes to some of the the other um items that you that you've got to, that you've got in the pipe um I don't. I didn't want. I had elected not to focus on the focus on them specifically because, well, for one, um, in both case, in both of the other two cases, all I have is is just a logo, and that's that's not that's not a whole lot to go on. Um, right. You can go. You can go on. You can go on some things, but that's reserved for the for the deep art people. I'm I'm not pretentious enough to do that. Mm -hmm. I don't. Go, I don't. I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure most of the art museums don't want me around. <laughs> um, I think. I think that I. I think they're just biased against tall people. Mm. But with oh, with all that said, I do want to sincerely thank you for 
taking the time out of your schedule to come on to, to come onto the show and enjoy the madness at play here. <laughs> definitely appreciate it, man. Absolutely. Definitely. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. And anytime you see fit to return, the door is always open. As we often Absolutely. say around here, drinking is not mandatory, but it is encouraged. <laughs> <laughs> and of, and of course a sincere thanks goes out to everyone who took the time out of their schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the madness and there will be plenty more where that came from as there always is here on the open bar of the internet but until then on behalf of the good brothers present and not present my name is Mildra I am your gaming monk stay fucking frosty everybody <laughs>